Hi, I'm Paul Mason, and I want to talk about the Milky Way Galaxy, as well as the Large and Small Magellanic Clouds. So, the Milky Way Galaxy has been seen really forever. People have looked up in the sky, and uh, different cultures have described it as a road or path. And we call it the Milky Way as the milky path, our road, that is seen to go all the way around us in the sky. Of course, as the Earth turns, we can only see half the sky above the horizon. And we, so we, at different times of the year, we'd see different time parts of the Milky Way. And it is uh, brighter in one part that is, for the Northern Hemisphere, the, the summertime is when we'd see the Milky Way, for instance, in like in this image here, typically in the summertime, in the evening. And so, um, lights affect the Milky Way, meaning the lights, local lights around you, how you would see it. And so if you're in a really dark location, you could see it like this. And they, this is the center part of the Milky Way. And uh, this is a region we call the bulge. The galactic center and the galactic nucleus is the part right in the very center. So we have the galactic nucleus surrounded by the bulge. And the Milky Way is a disk galaxy. So the other part, the galactic center, the bulge, and the disk is, this, is here. The sun is not in the center of the galaxy, as first found by Harlow Shapley, by looking at the globular clusters. And so here we have globular clusters located all around, outside in the halo. And by looking at the globular clusters, Shapley was able to see finding the distance to them that the center of the globular clusters was not the sun. When, uh, so many of the globular clusters were seen only on one part of the sky. So uh, the sun is about eight kiloparsecs or about 25,000 light years from the galactic center. And we can see this is the side view, this is a top view. This is not a photograph, of course, because we can only see the Milky Way from inside, but we are located near uh, one of the spiral arms. So the disk of the galaxy, one of the four parts here, we have the galactic center, the bulge, the disk, and the halo. Those are the four parts of the galaxy. The, uh, uh, the disk has the spiral arms. The sun is not in the center, but located uh, near, the, near one of the spiral arms. So um, this is the overall construction of the Milky Way galaxy. And um, we can talk about some of the things like the fact that there are uh, about, well, not quite 200 of these globular clusters known. The globular clusters are big balls of stars that are typically uh, a hundred thousand or more, maybe five hundred thousand stars, and some of the oldest constituents of the galaxy. Now, this image is a, a composite of the Gaia data release, which occurred just days before the taping of this video, April 25th, 2018. And uh, they have data on 1.7 billion stars, and this is a map of that whole uh, uh, data set. And that whole uh, 1.7 billion stars is only about, say, roughly 1% of all of the stars in the galaxy. However, from those we can see uh, the structure of the galaxy very well. And so one of the things we see is in the disk of the galaxy, not only do we have the spiral arms, but from our position, we can't tell that 
it really it, they're spiral arms, but we can tell that it's flat. And we can tell there's also a lot of dust, these dark nebula dust here throughout the galaxy. We can tell there's a central bulge and that we're not in the center from this picture pretty obviously. We can see two uh, dwarf galaxies. These are companion galaxies. These are not in the Milky Way. They are uh, uh, their own galaxy. This is the Large Magellanic Cloud, usually called LMC. The Small Magellanic Cloud, or SMC. Right next to the SMC here, we have a, uh, a globular cluster and um, 47 Tukunet. And there's another globular cluster up here, Omega Centauri. I'll look at a couple of places a little bit closer here, the center and uh, Omega Centauri, the large Magellanic clouds, um, as well. And just to show you a little bit up closer of the same image. This is the galactic center region. We can see that as we peer into this, we see many, many, many stars, but we see lots of dark areas. The dark areas are um, uh, sometimes areas that don't, don't have many stars, but usually more commonly, it is dust blocking the stars, light from behind it. And there are about uh, well, roughly 200 billion stars in the Milky Way. So this is the bulge region looking toward the galactic center. And these, a closer in, uh, image of the large Magellanic Cloud, the small Magellanic Cloud, and 47 Takuna. And to give you a mind, keep in mind that uh, distance is hard to perceive, impossible, and basically to perceive, we have to measure this, the, um, uh, um, 47 Takuna is about 4 kiloparsecs or 4,000 parsecs away. The Large Magic Planet Linux Cloud at the LMC is about 49,000. So that, that is more than 10 times further away. So this one is small. This is a globular cluster. This is a galaxy. It's a dwarf galaxy, but it's a galaxy nevertheless. It has many, many more stars and it's much larger than this globular cluster. The SMC is 61,000 parsecs away compared to just 4,000 parsecs away here. Also another galaxy. These are the nearest, some of the nearest galaxies to the Milky Way. And, um, uh, and we can see a comparison of that globular cluster. So the globular cluster is just by coincidence, more or less in the line of the site of the SMC. Here is another globular cluster, Omega Centauri. You can kind of see that it is a very, uh, we can see the, like it's a big ball of stars, maybe upwards towards a million stars all in that cluster. And there's many other clusters and this is down into the plane of the Milky Way. So if we want to know what is down deep in the heart of the center of the galaxy, we have to go to longer wavelengths. We have to go to infrared and radio uh, uh, frequencies to see what, uh, be, because those are the wavelengths that allow us to see through the gas and dust, or through the dust. And so, um, uh, also x-rays can be useful in seeing what's happening near the galactic center when events happen like uh, flaring, which occurs due to the fact that there is a supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way. So we have a pre-flare and then a flare event, and x-rays are indicating extraordinarily hot million degree temperatures due to uh, uh, material possibly falling into the black hole or um, being disrupted by it. So there is a supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy. It has about 4 million times the mass of the sun. And uh, we can look at 
tracking the stars. And we can see uh, these are photographs, first of all, infrared photographs taken towards the center. We see that there are lots of stars. There's about uh, a lot, um, the, the density of the stars is much higher than around the solar system. So within just a few parsecs of the sun, you um, have just a few stars, but within a few parsecs of the galactic center, there are many, many, many stars. So this is zooming in further and further, and we see that same image. Now here's a series of images taking over many years, and notice that the stars are moving very fast. Now it's still over many years, but they're moving very quickly. And then those are Put, the orbits are determined and put in a computer simulation where we can get a better visualization of the orbits and see that they're all orbiting around something. Now, in reality, there's no, nothing visible here. There is just the, um, uh, the place in which all of the stars seem to be orbiting around, following the Keplerian, Kepler orbits uh, around some object that is not seen. And so by using the same ideas that are used with binary stars, we can measure the mass of the black hole in the center to be about four billion times, uh, four million times the mass of the sun. And that's again about four million times the mass of the sun. So that is uh, the Milky Way galaxy, our home galaxy.